Welcome back to Nat's Knackers Yard, I'll be Nat. This won't be my Knackers Yard and this will be really weird because it's mid-morning uh, and I'm heading home from work. Why are you doing that Nat? Because blue died on me. Um, fortunately at work yesterday, yesterday morning, but literally got to the car park gates and it cut off. Completely and utterly cut me off. Now, I'm still not sure. Um, um, but CBFs have, or CBF thousands have, historic stator issues that people concern about. Um, I, I've been slightly concerned in it. I've been keeping an eye on my um, uh, on my battery meter that I installed on. Um, it's not been charging properly. I have been. I did then get a better battery. That's not being so. Uh, you know, I need to do this later. But what I don't quite understand is how bad that is. It, you know, would it completely cut the power? And, and ridiculously, well, wrong. So what did I do? I, I had a look around. I checked all the fuses. Um, I whipped the battery out and I took the battery home last night and I got the train home in all my bike kit. <laughs> which is not the most comfortable thing in the world. Um, I did a bit of a look around, etc. And I've convinced myself it's the stator and the stator's knackered. But it doesn't account for the issues that I had with the bike. Uh, I was still getting some power. Uh, so I was still getting lights, I was still getting, I was still getting the horn. Albeit quite weak, so the battery was quite weak. But, you know, it was, it was still 12 and a bit, so enough to run just um, but certainly not enough to, to completely kill the bike which is what it had done um, so so what well it's electrical then that isn't it so I've dug through all the electrics all the all the electricery and through all the fuses not a drama thought well okay tried turning on um, and as I turned the key, I didn't even get the prime. So it wasn't even priming fuel. Uh, it wasn't doing anything at all. I'm having a nice gentle poo talk because I'm being nice to him. Just hoping he'll get me home. Um, so, um, yeah, I wasn't getting prime. I wasn't getting turnover. It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even trying. Um, so I was getting nothing at all. Oops, still indicating. Um, Where's that? That's a head up here, it's okay. Um, yeah, I was getting nothing at all from it. Uh, so what, a little bit of, you know, my rudimentary fault finding says, well, there's, there's some sort of kill switch issue there. Uh, either side stand, main, um, you know, uh, bless him, he wasn't even trying. Um, so I had a bit of a tinker. I had a tinker with the uh, main engine stop, i.e. the big red button. Um, and as I was flipping that and bouncing it around, I could hear a click. I thought, oh, uh, give it a go, and Bob's your uncle. So I had it on, um, uh, I travelled in this morning with two batteries, um, uh, some jumper leads, uh, and my voltmeter. Now I think there's something screwy going on because my voltmeter on the bike now doesn't work so I think the fuse has gone on that there's some there's some weird power shit going on I'm sure um, so yeah when I get home I will check the power on the battery now, I'm actually on the old battery on the battery that, um, that the bike came with I say old old 
old uh, battery uh, that the bike came with. Its front brakes are still a little bit bindy. Um, yeah, so uh, I suppose they're bedding in still, aren't they? I've only done 16 miles. That's as far as I as far as I live from my work, albeit an hour's worth of travel or an hour and a bit's worth of travel. Um, yeah, so uh, so all very strange. Um, I think it's the kill switch or the engine kill switch. I'm not entirely sure. I'm risking it for a biscuit, uh, and rather than rather than fuck around too much, uh, rather than leave the bike for the day at work and then try and do it, try and then potentially have issues and try and fix it uh, in the rain or at dark o'clock, just thought it's daytime, the weather's nice, I'll go for it now so that if it dies, it dies, uh, and I can try and fix it in the sunshine. Alternatively, I can be recovered whilst sat in a nice cafe in the sun. Um, yeah, so other stuff that's going on. Uh, I've got a new helmet. Uh, what you can see, um, don't like it. <laughs> I prefer my old one. But the one thing that this really does have going for it is it has the little uh, sunglasses bit. It has a, a, a shaded visor, which is really nice. Um, today or in this weather uh, fucking hate London traffic um, so yeah I've got it all rigged up for uh, uh, wired for sound I've got a new Bluetooth set in it uh, just a cheapy one um, and the main reason I replaced my old helmet actually was the Bluetooth <laughs> Uh, because the uh, headset bits had gone all scrabbly and were sort of slightly digging into my ears um, but yeah, it's another modular. Um, as a as a spectacle wearer, they're pretty much essential to be um, uh, to be modular. Um, yeah. So that's blue. That's my <laughs> that's blue. That's my helmet. Okay. Um, so what else is going on? I'm trying to think what was on my last... Oh, valves! Um, my last upload you would have seen me got the valves out. Never done it before. Um, nearly broke the tool doing it. Uh, so as you right, buying a cheap tool. Um, although to be fair, I wasn't really expecting to have to whack them to get them out. It should just pop them, but hey, uh, lesson learned. Um, I then did the right thing, as per the book, before I, in uh, before I invested too much time, effort and everything else. Don't know what you're honking at. I haven't got a red light, a green light. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I asked for advice on cleaning valves. I then looked up and thought, oh, actually it looks quite easy. <laughs> I was looking for a chemical way of doing it, frankly. I was looking for a chemical strip. But actually, um, uh, uh, a drill, some padding around the end so you don't damage it. Grip it in the, in the don't be silly, please. Uh, grip it in the drill and just give it a quick whack on some Scotch Brite. And actually, it got it got the worst off. That, that's all I was after was just to get them so I could have a decent look at them. Um, I then had a decent look at them, got my calipers out, and did some measurements. And they are out of spec. Uh, only just, only very very slightly but they are below the minimum spec uh, expected and I can't remember, you know, we're talking 0.1 millimeter. Now that leaves me with some concerns. Firstly, my calipers are shite. Uh, uh, my, I've got cheap Chinese plastic ones. Um, they seem to routinely forget where zero is. Uh, just, uh, I've gone through about two or three of them. Um, I'm gonna get some decent metal ones. Um, uh, I've got birthday coming up, I might stick it on the list. It's a sort of nice present. Um, so for one, I don't really trust those. Um, for two, having looked around, valves are chuffing expensive and actually hard to get hold of for a 1980 bike. Um, but uh, I was sat in, the, sat in my living room uh, with a cup of tea and my feet up, looked on um, eBay and there was one set, complete set of uh, 
buckets, shims, valves, springs, retainer clips, although they've lost one, uh, for a 1981 for 30 quid. Uh, so I've gone for it. I'll risk it. I'll risk 30 quid. They may be just as far out of spec as the ones that I've got, frankly. Uh, and worst case scenario, they're straight, they're just slightly meh. Um, so I may well end up using them or using some of them but I certainly haven't measured them all but the ones I've measured have been out of spec um, so I've got a complete set on the way you should be here uh, middle of next week um, I hope they're better but frankly for the sake of 30 quid I can you know, I can afford to burn 30 quid on a, on a, on a hope just because they're so fucking chuffing expensive uh, uh, for new ones um, now these things always happen at the same time, don't they? And I, I, I watch uh, a channel called Ryan's Garage. Um, if you're not watching it, please do. It's really good. Um, much like me, he's feeling his way around bikes. Um, uh, and he's got a, oh, is it Shadow 250? I can't remember. Um, uh, sorry, Ryan. <laughs> I've watched all of them and I can't remember what bike it is. Uh, he's just had a, a real kick in the ass as a setback. Uh, in terms of sort of rediscovering a crack that he'd um, that he'd previously noted, uh, and then forgot about, moved on, and found an oil leak, so he's he's kind of ended up having t uh, taken a few steps back on uh, uh, on his progress. Now, this you know, is this a derailleur for me? Nowhere near as much as it is for Ryan. Um, uh, it is a pain in the ass, um, but we'll see. Um, worst case scenario, I will use those valves, they are slightly out of spec, um, but only slightly. Um, you know, we are talking 0.1 of a millimetre and 0.1 of a millimetre on some vernier calipers that I don't really trust either. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, thanks for all your suggestions on sealant, it looks like, is it 3 bond uh, is, is the most popular? Um, uh, and I will, uh, I will do a bit of a tally and then order it this evening, I think. Um, the problem that I have had with the one that everybody was saying about, and I can't remember the numbers afterwards, but there's four numbers, it's 11 and 29, I think, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I can, I'll stick it up at the bottom. Um, is that I can't find it in the UK, it's all in the US. Um, which is frustrating. Um, I'm not going to risk it and use something that I've got. Uh, I did put up on a, on a question saying, are any of these suitable for it? Um, uh, one and I can't remember which one it was uh, is probably suitable uh, but frankly I haven't gone through all of this work I don't just want to chuck something on and particularly when it comes to uh, silicon or, or RTV or room temperature vulcanizing I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure but I will make a decision this evening and I will get it on order um, something that has arrived on order is um, Something that has arrived on order is, uh, oh, that's probably really windy. Something that has arrived on order is my um, uh, oh, Scotch Bright Wheels, uh, which I've been meaning to buy for ages and I just haven't got around to it. And, and, and um, I have ordered them, I have bought them. Uh, Reason big for the bolts um, and the bolts head now, bolt heads. Now, this is not me being um, anal or overly anal, I don't think, um, nor is it me uh, doing a Dell and getting a wire brush, uh, a wire wheel and stripping the top of all the heads. Uh, I don't want to lose, remove, damage too much any uh, any rust proofing it's already got, but I think just a Scotch-Brite wheel will, um, will take the rust away. <laughs> um, and I've had a quick practice um, and it seems to be seems to be gentle enough that it doesn't um, doesn't shred them uh, but then what I'm also doing on the other half of my um, of my polisher uh, is then just give them a quick whack over with polish on the top so they've got a bit of protection a bit more protection uh, than they would otherwise have um, I'm not going for full billy bullshit I'm not going for you know anything approaching a show bike or anything like that I just don't fundamentally don't like the idea of putting something rusty on a bike when you've got the opportunity to do something about it so uh, that's me that's me rationale uh, on that one 
so what's left? Ah, that's what's left. Um, cleaning the head, the cylinder head. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure. I've looked at a few things. Now, uh, you know, if you kind of cast your mind around, I've done sand blasting, I've done water blasting, water blasting, jet cleaning, uh, I've done uh, little brushes on Dremels, and the one thing that I haven't really tried is some sort of chemical cleaning, so um, it does yards, look like, right onto Road. Uh, or a few channels that I've seen have said acetone, which would be, you know, a good example, or a good use, um, uh, the easiest source of acetone is nail varnish remover, um, but the quantity that I want is probably acetone. So I, I don't yet know, um, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I right, think if I road. I can't find somewhere to buy acetone from bar online, I don't really want to have to wait until it rocks up before I do something about it. Um, so, I, oh, I don't know yet. I don't know. I'll have a look this evening. Um, Continue for three quarters of a mile. I'm assuming, can you buy it at DIY shops? I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to think of other uses for it beyond nail varnish removal. Uh, no, no, pass. Uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I want to get that nice and spick and span. There's a broken fin on it that I need to sort out. I don't remember if I did that. I'm pretty adamant that I didn't. I could be wrong. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I just don't think I've really noticed it because I've not been turning it upside down and inside out. Um, I'd have started to take the oil seals off from it, which there's got to be a better way than I'm doing it, so I need to find a better way. Uh, but also, my thinking now is that if I leave them on while I clean it, it just protects it a little bit more, and I'll take them off once I finish cleaning it, uh, is my thinking. Uh, right, I'm going to have a poodle home. Um, this is really a test to see if I've got my, uh, my vlogging set up right on this helmet. Um, I do wonder whether or not when I had the lid open earlier you could even hear me because it is a little bit blustery today uh, but we'll see nice old bike uh, yeah we'll see catch you later, cheers all, ta -da. right well I'm home that's what I'm getting off my battery reader that's after a little bit of a free run at the end there as well Mm. Curiouser and curiouser. <laughs>